you. How many of you looked in the mirror this morning? Hands up. Really? Did you realize what is reflected in you could affect us all? Today, I'm going to be talking about bullying, mirror neurons, empathy, and fairy tales. Children love fairy tales. We all love fairy tales. Fairy tales are powerful comforters. They also provide some sort of moral, ethical, or common sense message. For example, we have learned that we shouldn't make our houses out of straw. In many fairy tales, bullies appear. We all know the story of Snow White and her wicked stepmother, and Cinderella and her cruel and jealous stepfamily. In both stories, the main characters were victims of bullying, where they were repeatedly exposed to teasing, name-calling, mockery, threats, harassment, taunting, and social exclusion. We live in changing times in a conflicted society where fear and insecurity are increasing our human tendency to scapegoat and bully. Bullying is a psychosocial hazard that has been given a modest level of worldwide public health attention. However, the resulting programs, advocacy groups, and anti-bullying laws introduced are not enough. Bullying is worsening. Bullying is now a major public health problem that demands the concerted and coordinated time and attention of healthcare providers, policymakers, and families. Clearly, bullies are not just in fairy tales. 20% of students are being victimized by bullying. This means that in a school of 500 students, 100 of them have likely been targeted at some point during their schooling. This is 100 too many. Ireland has one of the highest teenage suicide rates in the EU. This must serve as a wake-up call for Ireland. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, a child was bullied. It was unobserved and unseen. It began slowly, but then quickly intensified. Her things were taken. Her words were sneered at. She was humiliated in front of her peers. She was alienated from her friends. She felt trapped and inadequate. She became withdrawn and lost her confidence. She had reoccurring nightmares where her body ached, her heart pounded, and her mind was in turmoil. Her life became unbearable. Finally, she spoke to her parents. They supported her. Sometimes, you can hear the words in your head long after it has happened. It can be hard to forget what people say about you and the way people can laugh at you. Why do bullies lack the empathy to see our pain? I now know we need to rethink how we deal with this threat. Our brains hold the key to tackling it. There is no one antidote to bullying, but I believe empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of another, can play a big part. And mirror neurons are vital to the development of empathy. Just like the Queen in Snow White calling mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all, we can look at mirror neurons to help us. In humans and primate species, there are neurons called mirror neurons. These brain cells activate when we see someone doing something. For example, when a chimpanzee sees its mother opening a nut with a rock, it then tries to imitate her with another nut. This behavior is reflected in humans. Mirror neurons are related with empathetic, social, and common and imitative behaviors. They are a fundamental tool for learning. We are primed to mimic what we observe. As a result, we have the capacity to feel what others feel, empathize with them, and understand their feelings. Mirror neurons are also important in planning our actions, as well as understanding intentions behind actions. They play an essential part in our social life. They are key for the child to develop. Children develop empathy skills through projective play, which allows the learning of social skills such as communication, problem solving, and empathy through playing with puppets, dolls, and cards. Engaging in this kind of play forces the child to consider the perspectives of others and thereby develop empathy. People who bully need to develop greater empathy. What we are seeing now is a generation, so-called Generation Me, who have not successfully negotiated this stage. A 2010 research study by the University of Michigan measured empathy levels in college students. They found that empathy levels measured up to 40% lower than 30 years previously. So how do we foster the development of mirror neurons? We do this by fostering a culture of listening 
exploration, and asking the right questions. This can be a springboard for understanding emotions that help us become kinder, more empathetic people. For in hearing another story, with our brains connected and tuned into them and to what they are saying, we can suspend and identify with the teller. Take Goldilocks, for example. She caused mayhem. She inconvenienced the bears. But if we ask explorative questions, which show Goldilocks how her actions impacted the bears, this would lead to the learning of empathy, resulting in the taking of responsibility. She would apologize for her wrongdoing. She could also clean up her mess. She may even have been forgiven, but she would have learned to change her ways. Stories hold up a mirror to us all by warning of the consequences of bad behavior. Albert Einstein declared, if you want your children to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. If you want them to be more intelligent, read them more fairy tales. Mirror neurons could help give our story the happily ever after we all need. We are all on the front line in the response to bullying. Thanks to mirror neurons, the emotions we portray have a direct influence on others, as we learn from what we see. Our children are our greatest mirrors. Children visually project the image of those who stand before them. Eleanor Roosevelt advised, to handle yourself, use your head. To handle others, use your heart. When we are positive and experience communication and connection in a more positive way, emphasizing humor, warm facial expressions and affection, we change. Our mirror neurons activate and empathy is reinforced. Thus, we can rewire the brain and achieve something better for ourselves in our interactions with others. So now, when we see someone being bullied, we feel some of their pain. So if we feel the pain of those around us, why aren't we doing more about it? Let us act on these empathetic feelings and do more to reach out to those who are victims. Let us stop the ignoble activities of bullies by focusing on kindness in our schools, just like Maths Week, Science Week and Shock the Nigelga. And let us all promote and reflect kindness and empathy every day of every week. Imagine how we could, working against the tide, add value to all our lives, not just the 20%, allowing us to live our stories without persecution. If we do more to act on these feelings we all have, we can easily end bullying. Sound simple? That's because it is. Henry James once said, three things in human life are important. The first is to be kind. The second is to be kind. And the third is to be kind. Thank you.